I think it's the third point I've reached, uh, having interrupted myself to deal with the Chang trial. The interests of victims, in my view, are in good hands, though that is not a statement to exclude advancement in any area of participation consistent with notions of fair trial and of course post-trial therapeutic measures. The role of the jury is well defined. To permit further intrusion in the sentencing process by either or both the jury or the victims <coughs> could be seen to amount to the privatisation of the quintessential act of the state on behalf of the whole community. That is the imposition of punishment. And also could be seen to amount to the validation of vengeance and vendetta which hitherto the whole of the rule of law and the administration of criminal justice has been at pains to prevent. The Serious Offenders Review Council has about 740 constituents, that is, people sentenced to life, people convicted of murder, or people who are sentenced to serve a minimum of 12 years. The function of the Serious Offenders Review Council, SORC, is advisory only. It makes recommendations as to classification and placement of offenders and consequential rehabilitation and therapeutic programs. The person who makes the decision about those matters is the Commissioner of Corrective Services. As to parole, Sork gives advice to the State Parole Authority. And the advice is as to whether it is appropriate for the State Parole Authority to consider for release on parole the particular serious offender. And I ask you to note that carefully. If Sork says it is appropriate for SPA to consider for release on parole, it is open for SPA to refuse parole after consideration. If Sork advises that it is not appropriate for SPA to consider a serious offender for release on parole, <coughs> SPA as a matter of practice will not consider parole. Sork is not a parole body. It doesn't decide parole, it makes recommendations. Sork does not engage directly with victims or registered victims. Sork is obliged to inform registered victims of any intention it forms of advising the Commissioner to reduce a person to low security with access to pre-release leave. Then the registered victim uh, can make a submission. Often there is silence, which can be surprising or explicable. Often the response from the registered victim is irrational and hysterical, which can be explicable as well. Often the response is reasoned, a reasoned expression of concern. And occasionally, I must add, the response amounts to an indication of satisfaction in the registered victim that the offender has progressed in rehabilitation. Most problems raised by registered victims in that situation are usually solved by the imposition of geographical limitations on movement by the prisoner on leave. The Secretariat staff of SORC Corps passes on calls from registered victims to the 
relevant unit in corrective services or victim services. I suppose that means that the State Parole Authority, Corrective Services New South Wales, the Restorative Justice Unit, the Victim Services, they are the flak catchers. And Sork just quietly goes on with its business outside of the limelight. I want to end with this, as so many speeches by lawyers are ended by reference to literature and poetry. In 1925, there was a young student at Canterbury Boys High School in Sydney studying for the then intermediate certificate for which he was obliged to read Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. He came upon Portia's speech in Act 4, Scene 1, and I'm not embarrassed to read it, however well it is known, or to take time in doing so because of its aptness to the today's theme and the sheer beauty of its sentiments. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. It is mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. His sceptre shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But mercy is above this sceptred sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself, and earthly power doth then show likest gods when mercy seasons justice. The passage, I was told, convinced that young immigrant from Brooklyn, New York, to become a lawyer. He did. He became a judge. He died young, but with the highest of reputations for humanity, learning and compassion. Um, he also married my mother, which is one reason, I suppose, why I'm here today. But I am an adherent to the precept that justice can and should be tempered by mercy. Finally, Mr Chairman, finally, I adopt the words of another poet, a line hitherto unknown to me, but perhaps well known to many involved in a professional or especially personal way in the melancholy themes addressed by this conference. The words of Robert Frost are simple, sad, true and eternal. Quote, in three words I can sum up everything I've learned in life. It goes on. <laughs>